Well, to begin with, we should say that for the believer, a, a positive reason is hardly necessary other than the bare knowledge and experience of the believer. For believers in this room, I think it goes without saying that you know that God exists. And you don't know how you know it, you just know it. Alvin Plantinga, a, a philosopher, uh, has held that in fact the belief in God is a basic uh, part of the human psyche. It is something that is already basic to the believer. It's not something that you have to acquire over time, you just simply know it, it's intrinsic to you. So in that case, you don't have to really explain why you believe that God exists, you just know him. If I have a certain friend, and I know him, now that's my friend, and I know him. The fact that somebody else doesn't know him, doesn't mean that my friend does not exist. And in fact, I don't have to prove to the other person that my friend exists. I just know my friend, and he exists, and for me, that's the end of it. So for the believer, God exists. A Muslim reads this Quran. A Muslim goes to make Hajj. And in all of these uh, experiences, whether you're making Salat or you're fasting, you have the real sense that God is present in your life, and He is a reality to whom you're speaking and who is watching over you. So you don't need any further reason than this. The philosopher Tom Morris, in his book, Philosophy for Dummies, uh, actually uh, uh, tells us that there is a principle in philosophy known as the principle uh, of belief conservation. And what that principle entails is that we generally believe many things for which we do not require proof. Think about many things that you believe for which you do not require proof. I believe that the man I know to be my father is my father. I, I don't have any actual tangible proof for this, except my lifelong experience that this is my father. I have no doubt about it, and I've never been required to prove it, but this is something I've accepted without absolute proof. And we, we have accepted many things in our lives without ac absolute proof. We accept things based on signs, based on indications, uh, based uh, on some circumstantial evidence. In fact, many a case is decided based on circumstantial evidence. So when we ourselves are convinced of something, we believe something, we should not give up that belief, according to this principle of belief con conservation, we should conserve that belief. We should not give up that belief unless we are given positive evidence against it. Now that does not, you see what the principle holds. The principle doesn't say that you dogmatically insist, no matter what, I won't look at any evidence, I just believe. It's not saying that. It's saying that what you already believe, you hold on to, unless someone proves the contrary to you. So it's not that you have to prove that your belief is right, it's the other person who has to prove to you that your belief is wrong. So I have a friend, I know him, I believe in my friend, I don't have to prove to you that my friend exists, but if you think my friend does not exist, okay, you tell me why you, why you think my friend does not exist. Now, to begin with, I think you're crazy, but, but, but okay, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance. Tell me, why do you think my friend does not exist? Let me, let me hear you. I, I, I want to hear your reasons, you see? So, we believe that God exists, we don't have to prove to somebody else that God exists, but if somebody is saying to us, no, you're, you're, that's just a figment of your imagination, that's just a delusion, God does not exist. So then we can say, okay, I think you're crazy, brother, but uh, can, can you please tell me why you feel that way? I, I'm very interested. I, I want to know why you, ha why you feel that way, because I know that God is real, and, and you're saying He doesn't exist, but I want to know what's on your mind, what you've been smoking, brother. Uh, tell me, uh, why do you believe that God does not exist? 